ஹலோ யோருவன் திஸ் இஸ் மோதன் ராகவன் டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி கோ ருட்டின்ஸ் இன் கோ லாங்குவேஜ் ஹவ் வாட் இஸ் கோ ருட்டின் ஹவ் இட் டிஃபர்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் த நார்மல் ஃபங்க்ஷன்ஸ் ஸோ வென் யூ கன்சிடர் த நார்மல் ஃபங்க்ஷன்ஸ் வி வில் கோ வித் த நார்மல் ஃபங்க்ஷன் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் தென் வி வில் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் ஹவ் கோ ருட்டின் ஒர்க்ஸ் பட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் த மெயின் ஃபங்க்ஷனாலிட்டி அபவுட் த கோ ருட்டின்ஸ் ஆர் கன்கரன்சி ஸோ வாட் இஸ் கன்கரன்சி ஆல்ரெடி வி ஹவ் டிஸ்கஸ்ட் இன் திஸ் சீரீஸ் பட் ஹவ் எவர் ஜஸ்ட் டு ரீகலெக்ட் வாட் இஸ் கன்கரன்சி we will just see some of the picture representation of the concurrency then we will understand clearly in general our systems will have the different cores it can be dual core or octa core lots of core available right so in general if you have the dual core if you have the two task then if you are just dedicating one task to one core another task to the another core then that will be considered just like a parallel just showing here but when you consider something like concurrency the task will be split into the different small let's say smaller modules or let's say smaller task then it will be assigned to the different cores based on the availability and based on the let's say the task completion inside the task so that will be taken care inside the dual cores so what do you mean by the task for example when you download something from your internet browser by the time it downloads you you can do some other activities as well you don't need to wait till the entire download completes so that is one of the example of the concurrent but however internally if you see there will be a parallel and concurrency both will be working in our system but as the end user we want to utilize the cores at the maximum efficiency and we need to complete our task in a very specified let's say dedicated concurrent and parallel mode so that's why we are going to use the go routines the special thing about the go routines is it is default using the concurrency and the default keyword which you will use to make the function as a concurrency that will be the keyword called go if you see the formal definition from the go lang the go routine is the lightweight thread managed by the go runtime so this is the definition about the go routines but as a coder we want to know how to make the let's say normal function to the go routine first we will understand something the basic functionality how it works and we will go to the go routines so as usual the import statements here and after that you can see the go routine definition what we have seen go routine is a lightweight thread managed by the go runtime and here you you rarely use the keyword called thread you will be using the concurrency or the go routines generally the concurrency will be achieved inside the go by using the go routines so in that case we will be starting the main go routine will be kicking the main functions here like main thread in the main uh, let's say main function in the java side here you will be having the main go routine so that will be triggering the main function let's say in this point you have only the print statement hello go learners then you have the normal anonymous function the function definition without the name and you are calling directly by using the open and close parenthesis because we don't have any arguments to pass it so that's why we are directly using the open and close parenthesis so that means that in this lines you are creating the anonymous function and you are calling that directly right and after that you are calling the named function so that means that you are calling some function which is out of here and which which has the definition clearly out there for example here the call from the named function and it has the sleep for the 4 seconds the same way for the anonymous function as well it has the 4 seconds just consider the function first anonymous function as the task 1 and it has to complete 4 seconds and after that it will go for the next named function name function will take another four more seconds then it will come for the final statement if you just try to execute this code line go run main go just i will maximize a little bit so that you can see the result clearly enter here you can see call one happened then it wait for four seconds then after call to happens then after final statement happens after the 4 seconds so in this scenario you can clearly see there is a delay between the call one and call two and call two and to the final statement because of the the time sleep which we have made artificially but in real time you may be having some task let's say database reading or let's say getting the input from the user there are a lot of functions which can be asynchronous process so asynchronous process in the sense it can be independently done separately so that's why the asynchronous process comes into picture but in this case whatever we have seen the output that is a sequential output that means that it entirely waits for the first function to complete then only it calls the second function and it entirely waits for the second function to complete then only it comes for the final statement so which is not efficient way to do the asynchronous process right so for that we are going to make these functions as a 
let's say go go routines actually so to make the normal function to the go routine it will be very easy just to put the prefix as go in front of the function name it can be the named function or it can be the let's say anonymous function but when you call that function you need to mention the keyword called go inside i mean in front of the function name so here you can clearly see so i can make this function by using the go keyword but however after making this statement i need to wait because what will happen is that asynchronous process will be creating two more go routines for the two functions and it will come directly to the 23rd line so which means that it will not wait for other two functions or any number of go routines are available it will go to the next statement because it triggered that function it will go to the next line it will trigger the function and it will go to the next line and it has the only final statement it will execute let's consider this one i am not going to place any sleep here so what are the sleep statement you have inside the go routines that is the only print statements or let's say the sleep statements let's save it here now we will execute same code again here you can see it printed the hello go learners then it just called the go routine it is in the separate go routine call and again it called the go routine for the name function it is again in the separate go routine then the main go routine calls the final statement and after that there is no statement even though the go routines which got called that are still being executed but we don't have any statement in this current main function so it completes and comes out so that's where we need to make some setup here just to see how it works actually so let's see after completing the calls i will wait for let's say 10 seconds so what will happen is it will execute it will wait after calling all these go routines it will wait then it will after that it will print the final statement okay then again we will execute one more time here you can see the call happen then after it it's waiting for just 10 seconds then it makes the final statement so this way call one and call two does not have any dependency it calls and it the separate go routine waiting for the four seconds for the function one and the separate go routine is waiting for the second call for the named function so but however you can have the print statement directly there then it waits for only the time which we have mentioned out of these two functions let's say i will try to reduce this again and let's see how it happens let's say seven seconds the call happened for both go routines new go routine has been created then we're waiting for the seven seconds then you have the final statement so when compared to the previous statement this time this is not the sequential directly it calls the two go routines simultaneously or concurrently then it waits for the seven seconds and it prints the final statement so this way we can achieve the normal function to the go routine so we have seen the let's say the pictorial representation as well and here if you go to the go tour so you can see here the same kind of thing here it is the normal function the, the function name is say say and after that it has the string argument then you can just iterating that whatever the string you are passing and you are waiting for the let's say one second then what happens is when you call with the function name prefix of go then it will be considering as a go routine and if you call with the normal say it will be just like a normal and you can see here so just we will run it and see here you can clearly see though it called the go routine then after it is printing the hello but however in middle this call also parallelly going on right or concurrently going on so that's the reason you can see the mixing of inputs from hello and world strings so this way you can use the asynchronous process or say concurrence process by using the go routines just having the prefix with the go keyword so this is all about the go routines but in general you will be using the go routines along with the channels let's say go routines is something like you are just sending or getting data but the medium will be like your channels so that means that go routines can interact with another go routine by using the channel so that's what the next topic that we are going to see in the coming video so thanks all thanks for watching and have a great day